2.2, day 4 is our last day of notes for chapter 2. We're going to be assessing normality. So uh, just to start off here, it says normal distributions provide good models for some distributions of real data. Many statistical inference procedures are based on the assumption that the population is approximately normally distributed. So we're going to check that given some data. We're going to check and see if it's actually normally distributed, which means it's a, it's a symmetric distribution. Um, it's not right skewed or left skewed. So uh, the first blank here. A normal probability plot. That's what we're going to be making. Normal probability plot provides a good assessment of whether a data set follows a normal distribution. So whether it's actually nice and symmetric, bell-shaped, a normal distribution. So let's look at the first example here before we make one of these plots. It says the measurements listed below describe the usable capacity in cubic feet of a sample of 36 side-by-side -side refrigerators. Some are much bigger than others, it looks like. Are the data close to normal? That's the question we want to answer. So one thing we could construct, one thing we could construct to see if they're close to normal is maybe a stem plot, right? We do that by hand. Uh, we get the stems, we get the leaves, and we display it that way and see if we can see some symmetry. So one thing we could construct is a stem plot. We're not going to do that, uh, although they are already in order for us, which is nice. I suppose we could do that. Um, but we're going to actually do this in our calculator. So if you don't have a calculator, uh, you need to get one. So pause the video, grab a calculator. Because we're not going to construct a stem plot by hand, our objective is a normal probability plot. A normal probability plot on the calculator. That's going to be how we assess whether it's normal or not. So once you enter the data here into L1, remember L1 is your list. That's where it stores the data, your calculator. It stores the data in there. That's how you tell it what data you want to look at. Or you could put an L2. That also would be okay. And then once you get the data entered, the special plot is going to be under second y equals. That's uh, the stat plot option. Believe it or not, that's where you're going to plot statistics. So let's take a look at the calculator. Okay, so stat, edit, those are your first two buttons, you hit stat, and then edit, and then I've already entered all 36 of the refrigerators in here, hoping there's no errors, I checked it, there's 36 of them, they look good, so I got all 36, so you can see 0136, last one was 18.4, okay, so uh, let's go to second, y equals, that's our step plot. So I'm going to turn it on. So make sure you, you hit enter on plot one and just turn it on, highlight on. Okay, so for all these graphs here, this first one, that's just a regular scatter plot. So you've made those in previous classes, those are the easy graphs. But we don't have an x variable and a y variable, we just have these refrigerators we're going to graph. So we're not going to make a scatter plot. We're not going to make a connected scatter plot where they connect the dots. We're not going to make a histogram, no box plots, we've already done that. We're going to go to this bottom right option here. The bottom right there, that's a normal probability plot. That's a special graph for statistics. Okay, so the list, if you put in L1, this should say L1. If not, put whatever list, that should be the list that you put it in. Uh, the axis is X, the mark you want to make it with, sure, that works. And then let's just go ahead and hit graph. So you hit graph. Wow, uh, that's, that's uh, intriguing. Nothing came up. So here's the deal. Anytime you're making a graph with stat plot, any statistical graph, you can always hit zoom 9. So the zoom button right here. Hit zoom and then zoom stat. That'll zoom in on your statistics. How about that? These calculators aren't so bad after all. So zoom 9, zoom stat. Let's see what that gets us. Hit enter. Wow, that's beautiful. Those are all those refrigerators sitting there right in front of us. So the question is, what is this graph plotting these refrigerators against? These are all the refrigerators. Here's the low one at 12.9. Here's the high one at 18.4. What is it plotting them against? And the answer is actually, well, let's take a look. Hit the trace button here. Trace right there. This one right here, trace. So if you hit trace, it highlights this, like one of the individuals. Then I'm just going to arrow over. Arrow over. That's the 12.9. Then 
There's the 13.7. I'm going to arrow over. And then what are these what are these numbers next to it? That's interesting. So arrow over again. 14.2, some 14s, a bunch of 15s. But what are these numbers? And yes, that's a special number we've already done so far in statistics. So there's the lower ones. Those are negative. 15.6, 16, get into the 17s. And we got positive numbers. And then all the way up to the 18.4, that's 2.2. So if you haven't figured out what these are yet, the y values, the heights, those are the z-scores. So when you make a normal probability plot, it does, a, it does a little normal calculation for you, and it puts all these values plotted against their own z-score. So let's illustrate that with a graph. We'll sketch this. Okay, so I'm going to start with a couple axes here. And I told you it was z-scores on the y-axis, so right in the middle then should be a z-score of 0. Your 0 standard deviations away from the mean. And then we'll go positive 1, 2, 3, and negative 1, 2, 3. So the y-axis here, those are going to be our z-scores. So there's 0, 1, 2, 3, and then negative 1, 2, 3. And this line down here, this is just to get it out of our way, but this is actually the observations. So in our case, our observations are refrigerator volumes, their capacity. So between 12.9 and 18.4, those are the numbers that go on the x-axis here. So those are our observations. In this case, it's refrigerator capacities. So we can start down here. Instead of starting at 0, let's just start at 12, and we'll go up through 18. That should count for everybody. So 12, 13, 14, and so on. So this is our plot. It's ready to go. Um, and then this is 0 here. This is kind of special. If you're a z-score of 0, that means you don't have a positive z-score, you have a negative z-score, you're perfectly right at the mean. So I'm going to put a dotted line there at 0. And then let's go ahead and add in these dots. Sketch from the calculator. You should have your calculator in front of you. And I think I got 36 dots on here. I mean, it doesn't have to be exact, but I hope mine looks a lot like the, the calculator version. Oh, yeah. Okay, so here's the point. We want to answer the question, are the data close to normal? So it's almost like we're looking at a normal distribution from above. Instead of it just being a curve up and down, we're like looking from above down this curve. So like there's a lot of dots in here around the mean. That's kind of that's good. That's where it's grouped up. So it curves up, a lot of stuff in here, and then it curves down. There's not a lot of stuff in here at the tails. But what tells us if it's linear or not, or normal or not, excuse me, is if it does follow a linear trend. So if it follows a linear trend, that's a good indicator that this is actually normally distributed data. So we just use our calculator to make a normal probability plot. We look at it, and if it follows a, a linear trend, then it's approximately normal. If you see any curves, any weird stuff going on, that would indicate that it's not normal. Okay, so to answer the question in context, so the data for refrigerators, because I got to use the words from the actual question, the data for refrigerators are close to normal or approximately normal because their normal probability plot follows an approximately linear trend. All right, it wasn't a bad trend at all. If I can just for a quick second go back and take a look at it, I could even draw I could draw a line through there that would catch a lot of the points. So that's pretty good. That's a pretty linear trend. No big no big curves, no big breaks. That's pretty linear. So, it's approximately normal because it follows an approximately linear trend. So, in general, when looking at it, how do you determine if it's normal? So you make that nice plot, that normal probability plot. You don't have to graph, a, you don't have to make a, a stem plot or anything like that. Just throw the data in your calculator and you can get an estimate as to the normality, you would say, or is it approximately normal? So you already know for normal. If it's approximately normal, 
you're going to see a linear trend in that plot. What about the other two scenarios for not symmetric, not normal? So here's the deal. If it's right skewed, if it's right skewed, you're going to see a curve. Well, right skewed is, is skewed towards the bigger numbers toward the right. So if it's right skewed, you're going to see a curve in the higher z-scores or the positive z-scores. And if it's left skewed, you're going to go the other way. You're going to see a curve in the lower numbers or the negative z-scores. Stuff below the mean, you'll see a curve. All right, so let's look at the last example. It says use the histogram and the normal probability plot to determine if the distribution of areas for the 50 states is approximately normal. It's kind of interesting. I don't know where Illinois falls in that in terms of area. Um, it's nearly, I don't think it's really one of the largest, so maybe in the second bin there, third bin, tops. Area, I mean, it's big, but I don't know if it's relative to some of the other states. It's not, not that big. Um, okay, so use the histogram. You should right away kind of jump out at you that this thing is right skewed. Right? You try to fit a curve on it, draw a smooth curve. It's like, whoa. Things getting pulled by whatever this is, Alaska. <laughs> Definitely Alaska, right here. So we already know how to read that, but how do we read the normal probability plot? So it would have been linear, except for these two states, Alaska, and this is probably Texas, I assume. They are some really, really high outliers. So they're really skewing the data to the right. So notice. This is our best fit line right here. So this is the best line you can possibly draw through this data set. Why is it not on this, on this trend? Because it got pulled this way by these two states. So it's like, oh, I got to account for those two guys now. So it's like, it's drawn this way. It's not even through the majority of the data anymore. So if you can draw this like curve in the positive Z scores, that means it's skewed to the right. So these bigger values, they're skewing it, they're curving. So a curve to the right, or a curve in the positive z-scores, means it's right-skewed. It's right-skewed if you see a curve in the positive z-scores. So let's look at the last, the last piece here. So it just says sketch a probability plot for a distribution that's strongly skewed to the left. So the curve is going to bend in the negative z-scores instead of the positive z-scores. So the lower values is going to bend towards those. So let's go ahead and start with sketching our, our axes again. We've got z-scores on the left-hand side, and I really don't care what goes down here. As long as we have our z-scores here, this could be any variable. We just did size of states. This could be heights. This could be weights. So I'm just going to leave this blank. I just want to look at the trend of dots. So. I'm going to add in my dotted line at zero. That's a really important one. It's like the balance point, right? Z-score right in the middle at zero. And then let's, uh, let's add some dots here. So I got a nice linear trend going, dot, 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 dot. Lots of stuff stacking up. So here's a little dot, and then, oh, I'm looking at this normal curve from above. A lot of the stuff starts stacking up, stacking up, stacking up. And you'll notice the curve towards those lower values. So maybe you had a, a really small observation. And it's very far away, so it's like three standard deviations away below the mean. And that's what curves this linear trend. So now it's no longer normal. And I could even draw, like if I trace that path, and I definitely notice a curve down here at the smaller z-scores. So what happens with this? It's left skewed. Why? It's a curve in the negative z-scores. So you see this curve down below, and it's curving towards the negative z-scores. So that's left skewed. All right, that's all for these notes. That's all for Chapter 2 notes. Take care. I'll see you in class.